Yo, 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 what is going on, everybody? Hope you guys are having the best day of your entire life. So today I made about, not absolutely not. Um, today I made about 14,100 something dollars. Um, and I'm going to do a trade breakdown. Why I did a few things that I want to talk about for this trade, which makes these trades absolutely freaking the best trades. All right, now I'll break down the trades that I took. The reason why I jumped in, the reason why I jumped out, um, how did I manage my position? Do I normally manage my position on the overall trading day and all the fancy stuff? So wait, let's get to it. First trade of the day was NVIDIA. And the trade was like, all right, let's, you know what? Let's go back and play the replay, replay of the day, right? Um, all right, now, so this is where the market was about to open on NVIDIA. We gapped down a little bit. Not a little bit, actually decent move. So yesterday the market closed roughly around this 122.5 area, opening down at 119. That's a big move down, right? So I was like, okay, let's see if the pre-market low holds. If the pre-market low can break towards the downside, like the stock can go down, right? Because that's the most critical, the latest most critical level that you have had. So I was like, okay, market was about to open. And market, as soon as the market opened, this is what happened. We jumped off a little bit, sweet, and then started selling off. Now that simply tells me that pre-market low break, low of the day break, that simply tells me that, okay, market can push towards the downside, right? And then as a trader, I always want to see a trade if, like, I'd never want to jump into a trade if um, the pre-market low hasn't broken, or at least if the trend visually, I can't see the trend, I don't want to jump into a trade. I also, before we even move forward, I want to break down different time frames that I take the trades on. So you might want to take a screenshot of this after this, all right? So the first thing is different times of the day, I watch different charts, all right? That means from 9.30 when the market opens to 10 o'clock, I watch two-minute chart, okay? From 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., I watch um, five-minute chart. From 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., I watch 10-minute chart. I don't like to trade from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., um, which is like other people call it power hour. I think power hour is not made for us retail traders. It's for smart money. It's super volatile. It's just not the best thing to do. All right. 9.30 to 10, 10 to 11 is my favorite times. I can trade from 11 to 3 as well, but I don't like to trade too much because if I made decent money early in the day, I just want to walk away. I mean, if I'm still trading, then I'm trading on a 10-minute chart. Sweet. Now let's get to it. Yo, NVIDIA trade. Um, it was looking good. It was looking good. And I wanted to wait for it, like a little pullback. Dumped. Again, still waiting for a little pullback. For me, the entry only comes if we get a pullback. Otherwise, the entry doesn't come, right? Another next candle, we started getting a pullback. This is a beautiful move because I drew the Fibonacci from top to bottom, getting rejected off the 0 0.236 level. I'm like, okay, this might be nice. Because the Fibonacci's work in a way where 0 0.236 and 0 0.382 levels stop and become a solid rejection point. For us option traders, because we trade options, we don't want to really take a play. Like people call it 0 0.61 being a golden fucking ratio, right? I don't, I disagree. I strongly disagree. The reason why, because we day trade options, right? When we day trade options, yo, we don't want to see slow movers. Like my grandmother fucking runs faster then my grandmother can walk faster than trades they're going to reject of 0 0.5 that means the trades are super weak so i like to either take a rejection of 0 0.236 or 0 0.382 if it can pull back from anything after that it's just not for me right so it was getting rejected of this 0 0.236 i'm like sweet there's a critical level 118 sweet the entry will simply be like you know below these candles or below this level also at the same time these are the settings that I have for Fibonacci's. All right, I'll show you where to, this is where you find them on the side. But these are the settings. Just take a screenshot. I like these, the red color and everything else is like this. All right, take a screenshot of this. All right, wait. Now, this was a trade. The reason why I entered, if I would have entered here, the profit target would be simply this 117.4 and the trade went down. It went down. It touched my profit target, yo. But it bounced too quick. I didn't take any profits. I didn't jump out at all. And the stop loss for my trade, this trade was, um, if I'm going short, my stop loss was above this pullback candle. 
or above the Fibonacci point that we had. Remember the Fibonacci that we draw? This is the Fibonacci that we drew. It's just above the Fibonacci. So stop loss is right here. And the profit targets here, sweet. First trade of the day, usually do I do small position size. I didn't jump out because it was too quick. I don't want to say like, oh, I'm, look at me. I'm so, you know, the best trader out there. No, sometimes you make mistakes. I should have jumped out. Should have been happy with my 3, 4, 5, 10%, whatever returns it was. I didn't jump out. And the trade started bouncing. And guess what? What happened? I hit my stop, uh, stop loss. And there's another rule that I have. And it will significantly benefit each and every single one of you watching this video right now. Um, is when a, when a stock hits your stop loss, like the moment it hits your stop loss. So if this is my stop loss, the moment it hits my stop loss, like gets above the stop loss, even one or two cents, whatever, I jump out. I jump out straight away. I don't wait for the candle to close. I don't like anything that I cannot control. What if, if this candle closes here? Are you going to sit there till the candle close? No. The moment it goes beyond your stop loss, that's a point where you need to just like be, boom, I'm out. All right. You don't want to take chances. You don't want to sit around and be like, let me just, you know, let me see. Maybe it will reject. When you say maybe it will reject, that's hope. Maybe it won't. And hope is not a position. All right. And I took a loss. I lost 20% on this trade. This is the first trade of the day. I lost 20% on this trade. Now, I could, there's two ways how I could react to this. Number one, I can be like, oh my God, fuck the market, man. Let me make my money back. Or you can just use the first trade of the day you can do with small position size. Now, what I mean by that is every single day, the first trade of the day should always be based on a bell curve, right? So bell curve means this. So bell curve simply says that every time you take a trade, the first trade of the day, so this is where you start trading. This is where 9.30 for the us option contract option traders, because we can't trade in the pre-market. So we got to wait for 9.30. And after 9.30, the first trade of the day goes like this. This is the first trade. This is your position size, all right? Let's say this is a chart and this is your position size. First trade of the day, always small position size. The reason, in the past, it has happened to me so many times where I'll take a first, first trade of the day, I'll take a like a big loss motivated about the market you pumped up uh, pumped up about the market you watched some you know motivational stuff and you're like oh my god let's go man this is this is the time and then the moment you take your first trade you you wreck it right because you make mistakes you make dumb mistakes so first trade of the day small position size now if you are down you'll be down small if you're green you'll be green small sweet but setting up the tone for the day. I re I personally think it's easier to come back from $400 loss based on like my, of course, for you, it might be like, let's say $100 loss. It's easier to come back from $400 loss than coming back from a $4,000 loss. It's just so much easier mentally, so much easier to come back from that day. So I always want to take my first trade of the day, super small position size, so it doesn't affect me mentally at all. And people say, oh, you don't need to get, a, you know, don't let money get to your head. You shouldn't have emotions in the market. I mean, they're always going to be freaking emotions, man. I mean, there's money involved. <laughs> doesn't matter how much money I made. Like, I made 15 fucking grand today. And I promise you, if I go to the stores today, all right, if I go to the shops, let's say, to get some groceries, and if I drop a $1 coin on the floor, I'll bend over fucking try to get it out. Doesn't matter, even if it's $1. Because there's emotions involved in the money. Like, doesn't matter how much how much money you have, right? So stop trying to get rid of emotions, but you can control the emotions and manage the emotions based on the bell curve. So first trade of the day is small. Second trade goes like this, and it keeps on going heavier and heavier. And once when you're like, okay, I'm up too much on the day, man. There's always a point for everybody that I'm up decent amount of money. Like, I'm happy. This is decent. So it could be like for you, thousand bucks, could be for 1500, whatever number is. The moment when you say, oh, I'm up decent, that's where you start bringing your position size small for the day. Because now it's about you protecting your money from yourself, right? And for straight of the day, second, a little bit more, third, a little bit more, fourth, fifth, sixth, whatever, a little bit more. And then you start coming down a little bit and then you're like, all right, you know what? I'm done for the day. And that's a bell curve. It'll protect you a lot, all right? It just works. Now let's go back to this trade. My loss got triggered. I got out. No problem. No stress. And that was a trade. Now the second trade of the day was on SPY. All right, let's go with SPY's chart. Again, two minute chart. Because right at the market open, I watched two minute chart from 9.30 to 10 o'clock. And second trade of the day actually came from two minute chart as well. Um, 
by the way, if you look me, if you look, if you look at me, why am I looking at uh, looking down? I'm actually looking at my broker. So I have my fill prices and stuff at the bottom. All right. Let's go with spy. Spy trade. I took this trade and the fancy stuff. So here, let's go here. Buy broke below the pre market low. Yeah, clear break below the pre market low. Started forming a beautiful flag at the bottom. Sweet. I didn't jump in because of the break of the flag. Because to be honest, I was in the trade on Nvidia. I wasn't even watching this. So beautiful flag. Sweet. No problem. I'm still waiting for my entry. I personally like to wait for a little pullback. If a big candle has already happened, I don't want to trade it. I don't I don't like to. Some people like to enter after a big candle, like straight away. They'll, they'll be in puts. But you're paying expensive premium prices. I like to enter after a pullback. I want to see some sort of a pullback, be it a green candle or some sort of just like a contained candle, right? Um, and the volume on this candle was, even though the volume was a lot of volume, but if you think about it, just like, for a minute, pull back, right? There was this was a pre-market low. It broke the pre-market low and it went back to retest the pre-market low. And if 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 this candle would have closed as super bullish candle with this volume, yes. Otherwise, it just broke the pre-market low. This is a critical level of 548. And it just went back to retest the pre-market low. Pretty much that's what's going on. So more volume doesn't mean shit in this case. Right. And then we started coming down. Now I'm gonna I'm waiting for a pullback, and I got this little pullback. Why? Because 548 what is a critical level because based on my hourly charts. And if you want to watch where do I make these hourly charts, please go to my Instagram. Um, I did a live trading, um, live pre market um video where I'm breaking down where these levels are coming from. So 548 was a level. It went back to retest the level. I got this beautiful candle. Kind of looks like a micro mini flag. You can call it. Look like a mini flag. Like, so if I'm shorting this, I'm shorting the break of the flag, stop loss can go on the top of this 548. And there's another thing, yo. Oh my God, I see this among, I watch sometimes other traders trading videos and they make it sound so difficult. It's like, I'm just like, man, why are you making it sound so difficult for people to understand? Like, why not just tell them the stuff they're actually going to make them money? Please, if it's difficult, you will not follow it. It's just write it down if it's difficult you will not be able to follow it because our brains always want to preserve the calories because that's our survival instincts it has to be simple if it's simple it's going to make you money you'll be able to follow it and you'll be able to just get rich off it all right so keep it trading simple it doesn't have to be tough it doesn't have to be difficult and i can make it difficult and sound and come here and sound like oh my god look at me i'm so smart ha 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 ha, ha. no i don't want to do that shit i want to just give you the sauce go out there go print money Right. Now, this was a trade. Moment it breaks, super sweet. Stop loss on top of this particular particular level, 548. First profit target would be this 547. Now I'm risking about 40 cents to potentially make 60 cents. Now, it's decent. 1.5 is the reward for $1 risk. Sweet. And then comes, actually, let's see how it goes. It went like this. It touched my, prof, touched my level. I took some off. All right. Now comes the second point, which is negative risk management. And this is going to change your life if you actually understood this. All right? It's called negative risk management. I mean it. You're going to change your life. And if you're sitting there without a pen and paper, yo, um, I don't know. You think this is Breaking Bad episodes? This is what I'm. my question is. Do you think this is Walter White trying to freaking, you know, you're not sitting with pen and paper? That's it with pen and paper. Take notes because I'm going over how to get rich. All right. <laughs> So negative risk management simply means if you, let's say, if you jump in 20 contracts, 20 contracts, right? You might be like jumping in just two contracts or whatever. If you jump in with 20 contracts, the first profit target that you have, and if your entry point, let's say if you're um, on the option contracts, your entry is um, 1.20, that's an entry, the fill price that you have. First profit target, the moment the price hits your first profit target, you want to take half off, half off the table. Now for this half, because you entered at 1.2, it might be, let's say it is at 1.5, right? That means you took 10 contracts off. This is like 10 contracts off at $30 each. That means you made 300 bucks. That's That money is in your pocket. And like Nipsey Hussle says, all money in, no money out. Once the money is in your pocket, that money should not leave your pocket. What I mean by that is when you take half off, that means you still are holding another half. 
right? When you're holding another half, that means you're still holding 10 contracts. Now the stop loss for the remainder, and you now you want to do is, now you want to let your runners run. Just let it run up until the next levels that we have on our charts, next yellow lines we have on our charts. We start doing, again, we keep repeating this process over and over again. We take another half off, we take another half off, we take another two contracts off, another three contracts off, whatever. But your stop loss on these remainder is 1.2 because that's your entry point, original entry point. doesn't matter the price is at 2.2. It doesn't matter. Your stop loss is 1.2. That means if out of the blue, anything happens in the stock and it, it just does a V-shape recovery, you will always have this $300 in your pocket. Anything that comes on top of it is a bonus, but this 300 is in your pocket. And once in, it's in your pocket, it shouldn't leave your pocket. And that is called negative risk management. People worry about risk management, but in reality, negative risk management is going to make you more money. And another sick thing that I hear people talk about is small profits. Oh my God, I get so many comments um, on Instagram when I post my profits um, and people comment, oh, I'm only made a small, small amount of money. Oh, oh, well, nobody goes broke taking profits. Oh my God, bro. If you think nobody goes broke taking profits, you need to, you'll never be rich. Why? Because nobody gets rich taking small profits. You got to let your runners run. Look at how these big companies, Apple, Amazon, these big companies operate. The big companies operate like if Apple sells out of AirPods, let's say Apple made the AirPods and Apple sells out of AirPods. What do you think they do? Double down. Like, all right, there's, there's money to be made. Let's, let's make more, right? But in trading, people do other way around. They're like money to be made, but they want to run away. Why? Because you made a lot of money. What's a lot of money? You made 50 bucks, bro. You made 100 bucks. And you think it's a lot of money? No, let your runners run. That's how you're going to make more money. That's how literally you're going to grow your small account. Now, I'm not looking down on you. I'm just telling you the actual facts without sugarcoating. All right, let your runners run. Now, this is exactly what I did on SPY. By the time 10 o'clock hit, this is like by the time 10 o'clock hit right here, it's 10 o'clock. What do I do as soon as 10 o'clock hits? I like to jump on the five-minute chart. As I broke down before, went on a five minute chart, sweet. It's looking weak. Everything's good. Now look at this trade. It's, I risked 40 cents originally. Right now, it has paid me 140. As it's coming down to the next yellow lines, I'm taking some off. Look at this. As it's coming down to the next yellow lines, I'm taking some off. Why wouldn't you? Like, you're printing money. And now, this way, you'll be able to hold your runners for bigger, bigger. A bigger move as well because it, it's not comfortable when you're sitting in a trade and you see all of a sudden uh, the trade bounce like this it's not comfortable when you have when you're actually managing the trade closely managing the trade but once you're like man my entry was here my stop loss is 120 these contracts are running at 450 now whatever whatever happens i'll keep taking profits i keep putting the money in my pocket so originally it was 300 the next level hit i booked in another 100 bucks Next level here, I booked another 100 bucks. Next level here, I booked another 250. Now you're already printing. It's not a stress anymore because you're making money. And that was a basically, that was a trade. And then profit taking, I actually got out, fully got out when I had literally, I jumped, whatever contracts I jumped in, I took so much profits here, there, there, there. And the last level, I took so much profits. It got to a stage where I'm like, you know what? It's just not worth it. It's not worth it for me to sit around and manage my one contract. Like I have taken so much profits. I'm left with one or two contracts. I'm like, it's not worth it. I made 15 G's. I'm happy, whatever. It might keep on going down, but I have one or two contracts left. Even if these contracts double in value again, it doesn't affect my bottom line so much. So that's the point when you're like, you know what? I'm out. I'm out. Sweet. This is it. And that's how I trade. That's how I manage my trades. That's how I print money on my trades. Because um, I know how to let my runners run. And the moment 11 o'clock hits, I jumped on 10 minute chart. You want to see what happened? Look at this. Bro, you risked 40 cents. You made $2.70. That means every $1 that you risked, every dollar that you risked made you about $7. Think about it. There's no other business out there which can make you that much money but trading. Literally by pressing buttons. You just need to know how to manage your trades well and you need to keep it super simple. If you can't make keep it simple, man, you will not be able to make money consistently. You can you can make money once in a month or once in a blue moon, but you won't be able to manage the money well. You won't be able to control the emotions well. All right. 
So this was SPY. As while the SPY trade, I took plenty of the trades. So let's break down the Tesla trade that I took as well. All right. Um, this was a beautiful trade as well, but this trade came on again um, before 10, uh, before 10 o'clock. And this was a beautiful trade as well. Now, early morning, there was another, there was a few trades setting up, but I didn't take the trade early morning. The reason, because the earnings came out. This is the earnings came out on, on this earnings. It's after the earnings. And after the earnings, usually the IV is dropping. IV means implied volatility. Implied volatility means how volatile the stock can be. And that's why the premiums are usually a little spiked up. So I have a rule after the earnings for first 15 minutes, I'm not going to trade. So after the first 15 minutes, this is where for first 15 minutes were done. After the first 15 minutes, I started watching. I'm like, sweet. If it gives me an entry, I'm going to jump in. So now, is it giving a pullback? No. So I'm sitting there waiting. This is another level that I have. I'm sitting there waiting. Like I need to wait for a pullback. No pullbacks yet. And then it gave me a little pullback. Look at this. Do you see this? At one stage, this candle was green, but then the sellers took over. Sellers are like, nope, where are you going? And they pushed the stock down. It's still before 10 o'clock. So I'm watching two minute chart and I'm like, okay, this looks good. There's a critical level right here that I have. It made, made it such a decent move down. It went from like yesterday where the price is closed. This is where the price is closed yesterday. Price closed at 246. And I'm looking at 218. It's already weak. That means it already had such a strong trend. It has some, it has some legs, it has some legs toward the downside, right? And now I'm watching this. I'm like, okay, I'll jump in the moment it breaks this clicker level. And that's exactly what I did. And my stop loss was on the other side, literally on the other side of the candle, on the other side of the pullback candle. Now, yeah, I'm risking about $1.50 on this, but my original um, original move was still here, right? I'm like, okay, I'm risking risking dollar fifty, but I stand to make two fifty as well. It's already so weak. Like if it breaks this critical level, I'm gonna jump in. And it broke. So wait, guess what? Who's in a trade? Me. And boom. Again, this is a beautiful example for you to understand about negative risk management again. So I originally jumped in, let's say if I jumped in 10 contracts originally, I took five off the moment it hits this. I made whatever money I made, I took five off. All right. It was about 30%. I took five off here. Yo, the remainder five. What is it? The stop loss is break even. And I'll show you what happened. My break even got hit on this. And this is why it's so peaceful because you already took some profits. Even though the break even hits, you're chilling, right? And it went down. It was up about 30% at this point. But I was watching the next level would be 214. That's where I'll take some more off. And then it started pulling back a little bit. Look at this, started pulling back. And this is about the point where my break even got triggered. I think it was exactly around this point where my break even got triggered. And that's where I'm like, sweet. This was my entry. My break even got triggered. I'm jumping out. Now, some like think about this, all right? At the stock market, and this is this is super important, yo. This is super, super important. Um, write it down, it'll make you a lot of money. Let the stock market be the sorting device for you. Like, have you guys ever, um, have you guys ever been to a manufacturing plant where they manufacture some goods or stuff? They always have a sorting machines at the end where they're sorting good, like, like the acceptable product versus the stuff that is a little defective stuff that cannot be accepted. So let the stock market be the sorting device for you. That means let the stock market tell you when to jump out of a winning trade right? Like for example, this trade was a winning trade, but the stock market told me, stock market told me, simply told me jump out because my break even on the contract got hit, I jumped out. But on the spy trade this morning, what did they tell me? They tell me stay in the trade. It's still looking good. So let the stock market be the sorting device rather than rather than you trying to be, you know, sort the trades good versus bad. Let the market decide if it's a good trade or bad trade. So, and that only can be done when you have a negative risk management fully dialed in. Negative risk management was fully dialed in. I jumped out, whatever happens, happens. And I don't care after that. I jump out, I'm done. This was a Tesla trade, right? Now, let's go over another trade that I took on AMD. Beautiful trade. Another beautiful trade, but this trade came after um, 10, 10 o'clock. So I was watching five minute chart on this. And this trade simply came from this 150 level. 
This concept is called second breaks. Okay. I know there's so much sauce here, but hey, you're going to take notes. Um, this concept is called second breaks and second breaks usually happen. Second breaks. Second breaks usually happen around a very critical level. Like 150 is such a huge level. Every $50 move, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, all these levels are called dynamite levels. They're huge levels. And second breaks happen on a huge, huge, huge dynamite levels. So what is a second break? Second break simply means when the first, like, just understand, people who trade equities, people who jump, who trade shares, they are suckers, they're suckers for risk management. What does that mean? That means they like to have the minimal risk possible with the maximum risk, maximum reward possible. They suckers for risk management. That means when the prices broke below 150, they're like, oh my God, if it reclaims 150, I'm going to go long. This is the mindset they have, right? They're like, and they love, love to trade just the upside. They like, because they need margin accounts for the downside. And most of the people, like even on the news, you see people talk about, oh, Bitcoin's crashing or prices of cryptocurrencies are going down. But why do they worry about so much when it's crashing? Why don't just switch the position like to short and actually make money when the stock's going down? You sell and you make money when the stock going down. They don't do that because people who trade shares, people who trade equities, they only they are very biased towards the upside. They want to trade the upside. Understand the psychology here why I took this trade, right? And now the moment this candle reclaims this 150, they're like, okay, my stop loss is at the bottom, like a new low of the day. Let's see if it bounces off this huge critical level. And this is why the prices, you'll always see prices break a huge dynamite level and then it reclaims the dynamite level. And that is simply a second break. It's a first level, first points. It's a, um, it's a people who are buying the equities. They're pushing the price towards the upside. Now, sweet. Where's the stop loss? This is the entry point. This is your stop loss. Now, think about it. When they bought it, this is when they buy, prices go up. But when they have to get, let's say if their stop loss gets triggered, what happens? This And they have to close this position. This buy order comes into the market as sell because they have to get rid of their position. Right? Let's say if you have an iPhone and you want to sell the iPhone, it's a sell order into the market. right? And now they're like, they have to sell it the moment it hits your stop loss. So now what I was betting, some people place the stop loss at the low of the day. Some people place the stop loss at literally just below this 150. Why? Because they're suckers for risk management. They want to take the least amount of risk because it's a huge level. They're like, all right, I'll just put my stop loss at 149.95. Right? So the second break here works you are simply betting that the, if the prices can break this 150, all these stop losses are going to get triggered. And when all these stop losses are getting triggered, this is when the literally stock can do a free fall towards the downside. It can go down rather quickly. All right. That makes sense. It can make a free fall towards the downside. It can, it can just push towards the downside. And this is the concept behind the second break where you're simply betting. And again, more the pain, more the pain other people are going through, more there is the gain. That's a game we're playing, right? More other people are losing, more there's money to be made. And all these people, when as soon as their stop losses are getting triggered, they're losing money. And when they're losing money, that means the orders are coming into the market. A sell order, prices can go down quick. That's a concept um, here, right? Of the second breaks. Now, a pullback happened. I'm like, okay, 150 breaks, you're going to have, you're going to start doing it. The second break concept kind of start working. My entry point was the break of kind of, you can say this flag or the break of this particular candle towards the downside. I'm just betting. My original bet simply is let's see if we can break below 150. If it breaks below 150, I just know that, okay, you're going to start pushing towards the downside, probably get down to this level rather quickly, All right? This is the play that I'm watching. The moment it broke right here, like sweet, I'm in the trade, right? I don't you. I think you understood, right? You understood why oh, I took this trade. Now they're making the price hold around here. Every single time price is holding, you know what these people are doing? They're buying more and more and more and more. Or maybe this is like getting you know maybe the demand is so strong. But if the sellers are super strong, man, doesn't matter how many buyers are there, the sellers will always take over. Why? 
sellers are always going to be stronger than the buyers because greed, because the fear, yeah, the fear is always bigger than the greed. The fear means when the stock's falling, it always falls down quick, quicker than the stock goes up. All right. And this is pretty much how the trade went. You know? I played around for a minute, but this is how the trade went. Again, now comes a risk management, negative risk management point. Negative risk management, whatever position you did here, you do take half off, you leave the other half and let the runners run. And it pretty much chilled around for a minute. And this is what's going on right now. But I jumped out the moment here. I was like, man, I'm done. I made 15 grand, whatever. I don't care. Right. Um, and then the last trade of the day, pretty much the same time while I entered here, I was also watching Qs, which was the last trade of the day. And this is Qs. And I called it after this. I was like, yeah, I'm done. I'm tired. Um, yeah, my brain was tired at this point. Similar similar concept. Um, let the stock push towards the downside. Pre-market low has broken. The trend is super solid. And wait for a pullback, right? You wait for a pullback. You don't wait for, um, you don't just jump in in the middle of anywhere. You wait for a pullback. Now, this is no pullback. It is after 10 o'clock, I took a trade. This, there's no pullback right now. And then I got a pullback. This green candle, there's a little pullback. I'm like, okay, sweet. If it can break below this green candle, it can make a move towards the downside. Really nice. Stop loss would be on the other side of the green candle. So initially, I'm risking probably here, I'm risking as 50 cents, right? Essentially risking about 50 cents to make decent amount of money. My first profit target was this 469. I was like, all right, if 470 breaks, 469 going to be so nice. So I'm risking about 50 cents to potentially make about this. Decent amount of money, right? That's like every one dollar risk is two and a half dollars of reward, right? Um, now there was a, earlier in the day there was a pullback as well, but I was already in uh, multiple other trades. I was not even watching it, so I started watching it a little bit later, and it was solid. This is a trade, sweet. The volume's nice. The volume's smaller on the pullback handle. Everything's good. The moment it breaks below this particular point, I'm gonna jump in. And the moment it broke below, I'm in the trade. I'm chilling, right? I'm chilling. Um, first profit target, 469. So waiting for 469. And this is what happened. Actually added a little bit more later on in the day as well on this. Um, because it started holding this level really nicely. I'm like my stop loss is here. I'm I'm not stressed. Where my stop loss is, I'm not stressed. And then it went down and hit my profit target. What did I do? Half off, the other half as break even. And that's pretty much how this trade went. It kept going down. It was nice. Took some more off um, because I, was, I had big position size. Took some more off here. Um, and this is the trade. So basically, I risk 50 cents to potentially make about $2. That means every $1 you risk, you make about $4. Absolutely insane, right? Crazy. But these were the uh, five trades, the reasoning why I took these trades, um, the whole thesis behind these trades, and um, all sort of fancy stuff. So I'm going to post this video on YouTube as well. Um, so if you're, if you're watching this on YouTube, by the way, um, make sure you drop a sub subscribe to the channel, like, comment, whatever you need to do. Do it. I don't care. You do it not, but I just made 15 grand, man. What would I care? <laughs> uh, but if you do it, it's good. Um, and that's all. These are these are the trades, and I'll see you in the next, next, next. Right? Beautiful.